Ever since I was a young kid, the universe of Harry Potter and the Wizarding World is something I held close to my heart. I remember always getting excited whenever a new movie was coming out, going to every midnight showing with my mum once I was old enough to do so, and I even remember being in primary school and my mum reading me the books every night before I went to bed. I always have, and I always will. Hell, I even grew up loving the less than average Harry Potter movie to video game adaptations. They had their high points, with Chamber of Secrets for the PlayStation 2 being my personal favourite. They were very low points, with extremely forgettable titles like The Goblet of Fire, also for the PlayStation 2, then there were the weird few that weren't good but I always loved replaying like Half-Blood Prince and The Deathly Hallows Part 2 for the Nintendo Wii. I'm also not afraid to admit that I played the hell out of The Order of the Phoenix on the Nintendo DS, but aside from a select few, none of these games are really all too great. The best ones in all honesty are the ones that aren't even based on the movies and are their own things that choose to base their entire game around a single concept from the universe. For example, Harry Potter the Quidditch World Cup was one that I have very fond memories for, and even though it contradicts my previous statement, I'll admit that my favourite Harry Potter games up until 2023 were the LEGO Harry Potter games brought to us by Warner Brothers Games and Traveller's Tales. But recently, as of February 2023, we had a new game to add to the list of video game titles in the Wizarding World. Hogwarts Legacy is the latest game in the Wizarding World series, and it is brought to us by Avalanche Software and Warner Brothers Games. The game was officially announced in the September of 2020, but development had already begun back in 2017 with leaked footage hitting the internet in 2018. Since the game's release, it has already sold over 12 million copies with $850 million in sales. In my own personal opinion, Hogwarts Legacy was a massive success both technically and commercially. I loved every second of my experience with it, but I am not here to provide a review as that's in a separate video already here on Critics Play Games. Today I am here to discuss the Platinum Trophy and the journey I went on to achieve 100%. Sure, playing through the main quest line and finishing the story is one thing, but what is it that is required to get every trophy and achieve that beautiful platinum which acts as nothing more than a bragging right? What extra awards does one receive after getting every collectible, finishing every side quest, unlocking all spells, saving all magical beasts from poachers? What are the requirements for 100%? Well, there is quite a bit in all honesty. Sure, it's nothing too difficult overall, but the amount of time it takes to achieve this goal of earning the Platinum is nothing to take lightly, as you will be a wrinkly old corpse by the time you are done. As a quick side note before we get into everything, I do not recommend trying to achieve your Platinum as quickly as I did. Take your time, spread your play throughout, and do not exhaust yourself over it. I achieved my first trophy on February 6th after unlocking the Early Access, and received my Platinum by February 24th. It only took me 18 days to earn my Platinum, Platinum, and I was playing it in every spare moment outside of my day job. If I wasn't at work, I was grinding my Platinum non-stop. So by the end of it, I was fatigued and deleted the game off of my console immediately after earning the Platinum. I didn't even want to look at the damn thing anymore. But without further ado, let's get stuck into what you have to do and the journey I went on the Platinum Hogwarts Legacy. To start my journey, the first order of business was creating my character. Name your character. Um, Doof. Fiddle. My character's name is Doof Fiddle. As you can tell, I was taking this very seriously from the start. After creating my character, it was time to begin my journey. I encountered a dragon, visited Gringotts Bank, struggled to learn my first spell. Ready your wand and focus. Oh no, I don't want to have to do these. Wait. Oh my god, I actually have to... Oh no, this is gonna bug me. You know, because I'm a model student, I fought a bunch of statues and eventually made my way to Hogwarts where I was sorted into Gryffindor to earn my first trophy. After this, it was a pretty straightforward process for the most part. Lots of trophies I earned through unmissable events during main quests such as defeating the troll on Hogsmeade and attending my first class. Cool. First class student. Attend your first class. Yeah. There were also a lot of miscellaneous trophies during these events that I earned by a complete accident. After heading down into the restricted section, I encountered more statues in the chamber where I invoked ancient magic for the first time, and I even achieved the 100 hip combo trophy by complete accident as well. There's a trophy for getting a 100 hit combo. Oh, I'm running back here. And eventually, I earned my first house-specific trophy after reaching the map chamber as a Gryffindor. 
There are three more of these to come, but they won't come until much later. Following this, it was pretty straightforward in regards to earning trophies, whether story-based or miscellaneous. Quite a few trophies I earned off stream, and therefore I forgot to grab footage, which I apologize for, so some footage going forward will be used from other footage on the internet regarding trophies and earning achievements, so I do apologize for that. But until the end of the main story, it was pretty simple as far as trophy hunting is concerned. Some of them made the Harry Potter fan of me very happy, such as when I got to wield a Deathly Hallow, stunning 10 enemies with mandrakes, and even learning the three unforgivable curses through Sebastian's side quest line. Unfortunately with this, however, I made a big boo-boo and chose the wrong dialogue option and was unable to unlock Avada Kedavra. Luckily, I can still use it though during the Dark Wizard Battle Arena, so now the game is even more family friendly. Soon enough, my 30 hour journey through the main story was complete, where at this point I held 23 out of 46 trophies. So even then, I was only just halfway. Next up was the most time consuming portion of the Platinum, the cleanup and 100% run. Some of these were nice and simple, some just involved me reaching the highest point of Hogwarts, complete all battle arenas, which were a ton of fun and a good way to earn easy XP to level up, breed every type of beast the game had to offer, as well as brewing every type of potion and growing every plant. These tasks were fun and easy enough to accomplish. They didn't take too much time to pull off and just involved knowing where certain items or creatures were and then being patient while they either grew, brewed or reproduced. But the easy part was now over. All miscellaneous trophies achieved, all side missions completed which all provided cosmetics, outfits, wand handles and other goodies which counted towards collectibles, the journey was far from over. At this point I'd received the house cup and had 38 out of 46 trophies in total but now I had to complete what was easily the hardest, most time consuming and fatiguing part of my journey yet. Up until this point, nothing felt too tedious, nothing felt overly exhausting, and I was always having fun in some way, shape or form. But now I had to tidy everything up for my 100% run by completing all 95 Merlin trials, collecting all collections, and I also had to reach level 40 to then spend all my talent points as well. This was easily the most fatiguing element of the Platinum, and it was the part I underestimated the most. When the Platinum list was posted pre-Hogwarts Legacy's launch, nothing seemed too strenuous. Completing the game to 100% seemed like a walk in the park, as I'm not foreign to hunting down collectibles and completing menial tasks to finish a 100% run. As it is, only a month or two prior, I had achieved my Platinum for God of War Ragnarok, which was very similar as far as completion is concerned. But what Hogwarts Legacy asks of you to grab every collection is absolutely absolutely ridiculous. Everything in this game amounts to XP, so I do highly recommend getting everything including the fairly useless Accio pages in Hogwarts, Hogsmeade and every other region on the map. Whether you like it or not, it is imperative that you do everything even if it amounts to nothing collectible wise because reaching level 40 will then come naturally and won't be something you need to focus on. With this you'll also spend your talent points as you go because you earn a new one as you level up anyway. But getting all the collections is a monstrous task. Working my way from Hogwarts to Hogsmeade and then from the bottom of the map up through all the different regions, the requirements involve 10 tools, 69 enemy types of which can be found through the story, infamous foes, bandit camps, troll lairs, spider nests, and some are even spawned at random. You'll also need 89 appearances, 150 Revelio pages, 13 beasts, 75 traits, 42 wand handles, 140 conjurations, 16 ingredients, and 13 brooms. This in total adds up to a whopping 617 collections in total, even though the trophy tracker only counts 603 of them. So at this point, you may as well just collect all 617 of them anyway, because you don't know which 14 collections are not included in the trophy tracker. This is a ridiculous requirement, especially with the collectible varieties and various ways to earn these. Some will be earned naturally as rewards through side quests, a lot are found by casting Revelio, some are found in the open world through collection chests or following a butterfly trail, you can even find some in bandit camps and what I hate the most are the ones only obtainable through shops where certain collections can only be bought in specific locations after completing specific side missions as well. This process took me hours and this was all after I had done all the challenge tiers as I wanted to knock them out of the way first. Which on that note, I would like to speak to the individual who thought 95 Merlin trials was a good fucking idea because Jesus Christ.
Christ. This alone took me three to four hours. This is dumb. But even after getting 236 field guide pages, 15 astronomy tables, 20 landing platforms, defeating 18 infamous foes, as well as a ridiculous amount of other specific enemy types and more to complete my challenges, I still had to roam the open world to find every collection chest, beat all bandit camps, and then go to every specific shop to buy a single collection item. And after all of this was said and done, my 100% playthrough took me 90 hours in total. Quick tip by the way, some of these collections at the vendors are incredibly expensive, some going for as much as 5,000 galleons. So the best way in my opinion and the fastest way to earn galleons is by capturing a bunch of magical beasts and selling them in large quantities at the Brood and Peck shop in Hogsmeade. I personally found this to be the easiest and most efficient way to gain currency fast. But finally after 90 hours I had done it. I had completed my 100% playthrough for Hogwarts Legacy and all that remained were three more partial playthroughs where I had to reach the map chamber as each house. In all honesty, these three trophies were so merciful in comparison to the collectible process I had just gone through. But at this point I was so fatigued that a part of me didn't want to continue but with only three trophies to go I pressed on. Starting off with Ravenclaw I made my way to the map chamber from the start of the game where I eventually earned the Wise Owl trophy. I then repeated this process with Hufflepuff earning the Aura's Apprentice trophy. By the way, getting to go to Azkaban as a Hufflepuff was so cool. I noted the fuck out at this part. And finally, I did this one more time as a Slytherin to earn the Toast of the Town trophy. And each of these partial playthroughs only took me about two hours each, so it was very easy to rush through them. They were just awfully repetitive with the exception of a different mission or two here and there. But after finally reaching the map chamber as a Slytherin, I received my long awaited Platinum trophy. Yes! Oh, is that it? Is that it? Come on. Yes! Trophy Triumph! We finally fucking got it! Oh, thank God. It's done. It's fucking done. To say I felt catharsis and this massive sense of relief after the time-consuming journey I had just been on is a massive understatement. But after all is said and done, after doing your 100% playthrough, after getting all the other trophies with the partial playthroughs and all miscellaneous trophies with very specific tasks, after receiving the Platinum, what rewards do you get? Nothing. You get nothing. It's not like Dead Space Remake where after completing the game on impossible mode you get the pew pew finger gun which is just fucking hilarious and I'm so glad they brought it back. But here, you get nothing. Sure you get a bunch of cool wand handles and cosmetics and everything and outfits and you know, stuff I never used because they are really, really hideous. But in all honesty, I never used any of this crap. All the collections and all the collectibles that you grabbed, I never used. I never used any of the conjurations for the reason that I never wanted to, you know, customize or deck out my room of requirement. The 13 beasts are cool and all, but I just used them as currency and sold them off immediately after receiving my breeding trophy. The 75 traits I didn't even use. I never added them towards my broom. I never added them towards my outfit or anything to help me in combat. Never felt that they really amounted to anything, personally. The Revelier pages are, are a bit cool and everything, as they give you a little bit of a brief summary on different aspects when you find them in the world of Hogwarts, Hogsmeade, on the open world in the different regions. It gives you a nice sense of lore in the Wizarding world, but other than that, none of these really feel like they're awards of any type. They're just collectibles that are either cool for you to read and get deeper understanding of the lore, or just completely fucking useless. There is no big reward for receiving 100% in regards to getting all the collectibles and doing your full playthrough and doing all the other stuff that comes afterwards. There is no reward for basically completing the game 100% with all the trophies as you would hope, especially due to the time consuming process that it is, but I don't regret doing it either. For this I got the most out of the game. I ended up being able to explore every region through and through. Eventually I started to learn the game off the back of my hand. Exploring the open world and getting to go down every pathway for very specific tasks and collectibles, I started to learn the game and memorize each location, the path to take, what way to go, to the point that I just stopped using a way marker as well at certain points because I just kind of knew my way there. The game does beg for you to do the collectibles because to do the final main quest line and to get the Hogwarts house in particular, you do need to reach rank 34 and therefore the game to a certain degree does encourage completion 
to a certain point, but I think even the developers knew that going 100% really wasn't necessary for the game as a whole, because there is no reward, there is nothing that you get after doing so. You just get a platinum trophy, which acts as nothing more than, as I said earlier, a bragging right. And I'm the guy with almost 100 of these, so... I like bragging, apparently. Overall, my platinum journey for Hogwarts Legacy took me roughly around about 95 to 96 hours in total. 90 hours for the 100% playthrough, and around about another 6 hours or so when it comes to doing the 3 partial playthroughs to reach the map chamber as each individual house. It's a journey I don't regret, but it's one I don't want to do again anytime soon, but knowing me, I probably will do it again as of the PS4 version's release in a couple months. Why? Because I hate myself, apparently. And if it's another separate platinum that I can challenge myself for all over again, I'm definitely going to do it. It's not the first time I would have done it. So would I recommend doing it? If you're a massive Harry Potter fan, if you love the Wizarding World, if you want to get the most out of this experience, even though it will likely be fatiguing, I can recommend that you go for the Platinum until 100% for this game, but in a more spread out way compared to what I did it. I did it in such a short period of time. And I would have gotten it earlier, if I'm being completely honest, because the collections trophy was actually bugged for a good period of time. So I did take the time to focus on other Platinums in the process, like the Evil Within 2. But I digress. I don't recommend going for it if you just want to experience the story and have fun with the game, because by the end of it, you will feel like a wrinkly old corpse, and you will stop having fun with the game after a certain period of time. But overall, I loved my time with Hogwarts Legacy. Doing the 100% Platinum process is one that I felt unrewarding, but worth it overall, and I don't regret doing it. I will eventually revisit the game, but unfortunately, not anytime soon due to what this game put me through for my Platinum. Thank you all so much for watching. Look out for more videos coming very, very soon. I hope to bring you guys more of these on Critics Play Games with more trophy guides, more Platinum videos. Next up will be my Platinum video for The Evil Within 2, which as of me recording this, I'm about you know, one playthrough off. I got one trophy left for the classic mode difficulty, and I can't wait to get that one for you guys. I can't wait to provide that to all of you. Look out for more content coming to Critics Play Games very soon. There are tons of games and tons of content coming your way very, very soon. My name is Patrick Burrow, and this has been Critics Play Games.